do is, is document them in a, in a, in a, in a written document uh, and get back to you and just, and just publish those responses to you in writing. So first of all, question one that was submitted was, how would you describe our ethos uh, at Joyce Franklin Academy in, in a nutshell? And I suppose, uh, I don't know if you saw the video that we published last night on, on Facebook and YouTube, uh, it's had over 10,000 views uh, from yesterday, which is really, really exciting. Uh, our ethos really is, is about making sure that, that students uh, explore in their learning, that they discover new things, uh, that they fulfill their potential and, and, and hopefully flourish in their future futures. We're really passionate about four core learning values and those values being independence, imagination, insight and inquisitiveness and we feel that actually with those four core skills it makes you very very employable in the future with whatever pathway, career pathway that a young person wants to, wants to go on and, and consider. But, but perhaps more importantly than that vision and their values is that, that we're, we're a school that wants our children to be happy. We care about our students. Um, we, we very much want them to, to succeed because uh, of that happiness, that enjoyment of coming to school. Uh, and obviously, you know, we, we're a big comprehensive school uh, and school is school and, and not everybody uh, loves it every day, every hour uh, and every moment of that day. Uh, however, I do think that we have a happy school uh, and I do think that, that standing on the crossing each day uh, when I'm greeting the children, uh, they, they are positive they are optimistic even in these times uh, and, and that's always incredibly rewarding to see. So that was question one. Moving on to question two, what makes us different to other schools? Well first of all we are we are still quite a small secondary school. So currently on roll, we have around 950 students. Um, we are growing, there's no doubt. So in year 11, we have 150, but in year seven, we have 200. Uh, and it does look like we're gonna be very, very busy next year as well. Uh, our maximum uh, pan is 200, although we can go to 210, which would mean a seven form entry. We uh, currently have a seven form entry in year seven, but a six form entry in every other year group. We do not intend to grow any larger than 1200 students. Uh, we believe that will lose the personalized approach that we can offer currently as a secondary school. Uh, and we so no, see no reason to do that. Um, we, we're proud of the fact that actually we are a smaller community school. And, and that with that comes a very traditional uh, curriculum and a very traditional ethos. The school started in 1588, as you may have seen from our video uh, yesterday, uh, set up by Dame Joyce Franklin. And, and over those sort of, well, several centuries, we, we have emerged into, into the school that we are today. But we've had several different faces along that way, whether we've been a grammar school or uh, converted into a mixed comprehensive and then an academy. And then most recently, of course, joining a, multi, a small multi-academy trust based in South Cambridge called Anglia Learning. So we really have transformed over those years. And I actually think that makes us very, very strong as well, because we've, we've, we, this school has survived two wars. It will definitely survive a pandemic and we continue to grow from strength to strength. Uh, what are we improving on? Well, I think we, uh, we continue to, of course, improve in academic outcomes. Uh, I won't talk about last year's results because obviously they were very, very different and students weren't assessed in the usual way. Um, however, we did have some real success, success stories still with, for example, a number of our year 13 students still going on to Russell Group Universities uh, and GCSE students, um, several of them achieving uh, the top grades, grades seven to nine, and moving on to either our sixth form or, or a sick form in the local area um, but but also in 2019 we had our best set of results ever uh, with a very positive progress eight score um, and of course a high attainment score as well uh, and you can have a look at that on the school league tables that's still there uh, on the DfE tables um, so we're proud of that increase over the last four years that continues to go from strength to strength but I, I've always said that a school is is not about simply results. Uh, it's also about making sure that students go on to achieve what it is they'd like to achieve, whatever that might be. And we, we have an incredibly high percentage of students that go on to further education or employment. Um, I think it's around 98% currently. Um, and, and we're very proud of that figure as well. Uh, and, and also, 
it, it's things like attendance, you know, that continues to improve. And over the past three weeks of being open, um, throughout the challenges that we've had, uh, we, we have been at 97% attendance. Uh, and I think that, again, demonstrates just how keen uh, not just our students are, but, but our parent body. I mean, they may have been desperate to get uh, their children back to school after home learning. I'm sure that's not the case. How supportive they are in our school uh, and also how they continue to be. So there's just a few things that we're improving on. Uh, I think we continue to get stronger in the classroom. I think um, I've been at the school for, well, this is my, my eighth year. So um, I've no doubt seen a significant improvement in what happens in the classroom over those years and continue to do so. Uh, we have a, an exciting group of, of new teachers that have joined our school, newly qualified teachers this year, uh, who also bring sort of fresh dynamic um, to what's happening in the classroom. So there's just a few things that we're improving upon. Um, we're also going through a very, very exciting building project at the moment. Um, uh, we have been for the last three and a half years trying to sell a small strip of land. Um, it's, it's part of our school playing field, but never used. Uh, for those of you who know the site, it's uh, just on the bottom of Berry Water Lane. And it's an L shaped, which includes the sixth form car park and goes around into the bottom part of the field, uh, sort of along the train line. We've actually sold that, that strip of land um, to Hill Builders uh, and they will be building 24 homes on that strip of land. Um, but with that comes significant funds back into the academy um, to improve our resources. It's around £3.1 million. Pounds. Uh, and we start that with, we have actually started the work by bu building a brand new car park around the back of the site. And that will give us around 60, 63 spaces, uh, including three electrical car charging points, um, which will, I think, that, that extra car, that sort of car park, moving that from, from the sixth form to, to around the back of the site, but I think will improve things greatly, especially around our sports facilities uh, and ensuring that lettings have, have easy access to those sport facilities. Uh, but more importantly, we then start work on improving our facilities and we'll be building a new multi-use games pitch uh, for hockey and football, uh, an AstroTurf that, that will be floodlit as well. Um, and that will be built uh, hopefully by June 2021. Obviously, uh, timeframes at the moment are questionable, um, but that is the aim. And we will also be building tennis courts, two new tennis courts, um, uh, some all weather cricket nets, a new Astro cricket strip so that we can again play cricket on our cricket pitch. Uh, and and also improve making some significant improvements to our changing rooms uh, and current sporting centre as well, repairing a leaky roof, uh, all of those things that develop. And I think it will mean that, that our school really stands out uh, in relation to sporting facilities. If there are funds left, we will then look at other areas as well, uh, including upgrading um, parts of our technology department, which, which are in need of an upgrade. So um, all very exciting, I think, to start the school uh, when, when we have just had that significant investment. Where do we want to be in five years was a question that was sent to me. That's a really, really interesting question. Um, fundamentally, we, we want to keep improving. Uh, we want a school that is, that is full, that has 1,200 students, no more, as I've said before, but a full school in five years' time, I think would be excellent. A continuing growing sixth form. Uh, our sixth form offer, it, I think, is really exciting because it is it, it, it's small classes. It's very, very bespoke. Um, we don't. We obviously need to grow our classes a little bit to make sure that the sixth form remains viable. However, there's no doubt that it is at the moment, and it continues to grow. Uh, and I think in five years' time, uh, we could be having providing a very exciting sixth form offer. Uh, I would like the school to obviously continue to improving its academic outcomes um, to be a real driving force in the local area for success academically uh, and of course uh, we want students to continue to to look back on their time at Joyce Franklin and be positive and 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 I'm just checking that I'm okay because my screen is frozen I hope we can all hear oh I'm back I'm back in the game um, uh, so fundamentally we want our children to look back on their school experience at Joyce Franklin and actually say Do you know what? I really enjoyed second school and it, it, it didn't just help me with um, my platform to success moving forward and gave me those stepping stones to move forward. It also uh, made me a, an empathetic, understanding, considerate, compassionate young person and, and that I think is, is the school that, that we want to be in five years time actually um, producing young people with that mindset. 
next question was around what difference will the extra investment make in the school i think i've covered that a little bit um already but i will just say this as well we we also have, have, have been fortunate enough to have um some significant uh, government funding, uh, a SIF grant, a, con a condition improvement fund grant uh, at the end of last year, whereby uh, we've actually managed to replace all of our, all of our faulty boilers uh, and also uh, install some new lighting in, in LED lighting in three of our buildings which has had a significant improvement already. Uh, it's amazing what some decent lighting does in classrooms and hallways and corridors. Uh, obviously it's sad that I can't show you. Normally I'd be doing a, a school tours now throughout the next sort of few weeks. Uh, and obviously I can't show you that at the moment, but, but hopefully, you know, when, when things start to improve and become safer again, I can show you and I can give you a tour uh, potentially of, of, of and, and share with you some of the improvements that we're making to buildings. There's still a way to go. Uh, and if you were to look around this school today, I think you would uh, still spot a difference in the quality that happens in the classroom with the buildings themselves. There is still a gap, um, but there's no doubt that over the next sort of two years, we've got a really strong plan to ensure that actually the facilities that students learn in continue to improve. Uh, brilliant. So some questions have come in. So I'll, I'll do one more question of what was sent to me beforehand and then we'll go to your questions um, or some of your questions. Uh, there's a lot of COVID themed questions coming in. I look forward to answering them. Um, question six is around behaviour. And what is behaviour like? Behaviour is generally very, very good in this school. Um, we have calm, uh, purposeful classrooms. Um, students want to learn. They're keen to learn. Um, it's it's a, a school that I have a very, very low exclusion rate. Um, very rarely do, do, does it where well, I have to issue the, the, the top sanction. Um, and, and students generally are incredibly polite, respectful and mature. Of course, we're a comprehensive school uh, and, and I couldn't say that hand on heart that 100% of the students are, are, are how I described. Uh, however, there is no doubt that we have a very strong behaviour policy. Uh, we have a very clear uh, six steps that we move through if we feel that there is um, behaviour that, that needs to be dealt with. Um, that ranges from dealing with the sort of minor low level disruption all the way through to more significant um, misdemeanors, in which case uh, they will demand a more a more a stronger sanction. Uh, but, but it's clear that we also build our behavior policy around rewards and actually praise uh, and making sure we, as much as we have six steps on the consequences ladder, we also have six steps on the rewards ladder. And, and ranging from, from a sort of R1 on the system, which will be sort of a really good piece of work in class, that would be then pinged through to you on your phone on your parent app and you'd be able to see that your child has a as an r1 in the lesson uh, and also what what that r1 is for so i think that's a really powerful tool that we have but equally we also have the r6 which is a principal's commendation it's 50 points on their system uh, on their on their on their positive system and a certificate from me and that really is for sort of an exceptional piece of work or um, doing something extraordinary which particularly puts our community in a positive light so i'll give you an example there was a student during uh, lockdown who walked around their village uh, in in their joyce franklin p kit and in in ppe uh, picked up litter around their village uh, which i think was just an amazing example of of the type of student that, that is at our school and therefore uh, that student was awarded with a with a principal's commendation so there, there's just an example of, of how our behavior works i'm going to go now to some of the questions that, that you've asked so, okay, so we're going to fire them out first question is please could you speak a little more on the performing arts opportunities Brilliant. So performing arts is, is really key to our curriculum. So we will, uh, in year seven, a child will have two hours of drama a fortnight and also two hours of music a fortnight. Um, equally, of course, art, and I know that's not performing arts, but art is also a vital part of our curriculum uh, as well and a very successful part. They, students will also have the opportunity to be involved in, in, in normal times in a school show. That show 
absolutely includes students from year seven to year 13. So often secondary schools do not have a, a full school show open to the younger students. We do. Um, they might not have a lead, uh, but they will definitely be involved in that show. And it is an inclusive show. So it's very much a range of students with a range of abilities being in being a part of it. Um, they, they will audition for it, they will have obviously uh, an intense rehearsal schedule and performances range from around sort of late Feb, early March time to sometimes we, we move it to a summer production as well. Additionally, we have a very, um, a very strong music offer. Uh, obviously, uh, we, we still, if you Google Joyce Franklin Academy Newport, still a, a lot of press that comes up around when we, uh, when we removed music from the curriculum at Key Stage 3. Um, obviously, the first thing I did a couple of years ago as principal was to put music back on the timetable for Key Stage 3 and employ a full-time music teacher. Um, since we've done that, I think music has grown from strength to strength. We do a number of concerts throughout the year. Just before lockdown, we did a, we did a fantastic spring concert um, with a range of students from all year groups performing um, some, some either some um, obviously some music that's been written or even their own composed music which was also I think really inspiring um, and, and we also have peripatetic music lessons uh, from singing to drums to to brass instruments and to wind instruments as well so that offer starts as well from year seven um, and again and I, and I realize this is potentially uh, I'm very careful not making promises that I can't fulfill uh, but again if we do have some funds available um, for uh, after sorry the, the land sale the money that after it's gone on sort of improving sports facilities uh, I am very interested in then looking as I said at technology but also the art as well uh, and seeing what what support we might be able to to provide to ensure that our offer is is as, as, as good as it possibly can be i hope that's answered your question um we'll go on to the next one please can you explain how you ensure your able students are stretched okay able students being stretched so we we, we have a very uh, able cohort each year um and we have a very very uh, gifted, articulate um, cohort of students. Fundamentally, they're taught very, very well in our feeder primary schools. Uh, and therefore, they come very prepared for a secondary curriculum and a secondary education. Uh, we stream in maths and English. So we do set according to ability. We usually do that immediately. Obviously this year we haven't been able to do that immediately because we haven't had the range of assessment data that we have previous years. So we are doing our own assessment this year, slightly different, and we're gonna stream probably from October half term. Obviously, depending on that streaming, the curriculum is slightly altered. So for example, in English, uh, they might have a different text to study at, at, in, in, the, in the highest set um, and a slightly different set of um, uh, learning objectives and assessment outcomes as well, uh, which perhaps are more tailored to uh, the journey towards key stage four curriculum slightly earlier, and that includes year seven. Now, what we don't do is start dishing out GCSE grades in year seven. I think I think that would be um, destroying the joy of key stage three, actually. Uh, however, we, we, we definitely have um, a sort of uh, more challenging assessment portfolio in the higher sets. So for example, they will be encouraged to write essays, um, whilst perhaps in the lower sets they may not be, it might be more structured questions. So there's, there's just an example of, of how we might stream, and, that, and that's mirrored in, in, in maths as well, in terms of the differentiation within the curriculum and the assessment that we provide. Um, then of course we have a very um, challenging curriculum really, so we encourage all of our students to qualify for the EBAC. That's a qualification obviously in English and maths, and then science, and then a language, and then a humanities being history, geography, or computing. Um, am I back? I'm back. Sorry, it's, uh, it's our uh, 17th, 18th century Wi-Fi in, in our in our Grade One listed building. My apologies. Um, so, uh, as I said, we 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 really try to promote the EBAC qualification. Um, it's not for everybody, and we do have. Obviously, uh, uh, we have a curriculum meeting with every student as they approach their GCC options and discuss what's best for them. But if we feel like they, they should be uh, an EBAC student, then we will definitely push them towards that curriculum offer because 
that is traditionally what we're good at, even before the EBAC qualification came in and a big push from government to, to do that more academic route, we were actually doing it. So therefore the foundations were already there so students will do two languages in year seven. Um, they will have a choice of four between French, Spanish, Latin and German. Uh, when they start to get to GCSE, um, we do also have the option to take Italian. Um, we, unfortunately, we can't offer that key stage three at the moment due, due to staffing commitments. But, but, but definitely, we still have staff uh, in our languages team that can teach Italian, uh, that were fluent in Italian. Uh, we also have, obviously, history or geography, but we also encourage history and geography. So not many secondary schools do that. They normally sort of make you choose a humanities. Uh, we try. We 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 say the offer is there to do to do both. Um, we do allow two languages as well. So there are students in year nine, for example, taking two GCC languages. So challenge is rooted through our curriculum. Uh, it's also rooted through through our teaching and learning and the assessment that, that we offer. And I hope that answers your question. Next question. So I'm just going to jump the question because we've talked a lot about this already. So the question that came in was when do the children get put into sets? So I think that sort of continues on from what we are just saying and then I'll get back to the question before. Yeah. Fine. So, um, I, I, yeah, I think I've answered that question around setting. Um, generally, it is immediately, um, but but obviously this year we've had to live, be a little bit different. And it might be for, for the current year six, we also might have to be a bit flexible in when we set. Obviously, we can't tell the future. We don't know what's going to happen and how uh, the pandemic might affect things in education throughout this year. So, therefore, I think we we need to be prepared that potentially we move that setting a little bit further down. It's also important to know that we review setting regularly so we generally review setting at the end of each term at the end of each main assessment point and we will make minor changes throughout the year. We will then do a significant reset at the end of each academic year. So the next question, uh, you'll like this one. Due to Covid, I appreciate we can't do a real tour. Is there a chance to walk around the grounds over the weekend? Uh, walking around the grounds. Um, uh, well, there is a public footpath in our school uh, around the back of the fields, um, which I can't stop you walking on. So, of course, you can walk along that public footpath. Uh, I would uh, ask you that you that you remain on the public footpath if possible. You can, of course, walk down Berrywater Lane, which will uh, and past the crossing, which will see both sides of the site. Uh, I'm afraid I can't have anybody on the site at this moment in time. Uh, hopefully in time you know we might be able to do something for you uh, when it's safer to do so whereby you can have a look around and hopefully as well your children will have an opposition an opportunity to have a proper transition which the current year seven didn't have uh, whereby you the, the children do get to visit the school and also have at least one day uh, following a secondary timetable which usually takes place in july Next question, how would you describe uh, your approach to inclusion and diversity for staff, pupils and in learning? Wow, that's a fabulous question. Um, so I will take inclusion first. Um, we, we have a, a very inclusive curriculum in that, um, yes, of course, as I said, we stress academic rigour. We, we do meet with every single student, as I've said already, to make sure that's right for them. And it might be that it's not. And it might be actually that a language is not right for a student. And therefore, we need to think differently. Um, for example, we have just put textiles on our curriculum at year seven, uh, which already is, is, is still starting to prove popular and no doubt if we continue to accelerate textiles through the curriculum and into GCSE I think that could be a very interesting option for, 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 for a student um, if they were interested in that so I think it's really key uh, we also of course offer photography sociology at GCSE uh, and these different breadth of subjects might be right for, for different students and, and, and that's really key is, is that we encourage students their options are their options uh, of course there is an, an element of are you sure this is right for you and what what is your career path what are you thinking and maybe this is the right choice um, but fundamentally this is this is this is the student's choice and and i cannot stress that enough so there's there's one example of inclusion uh, <coughs> excuse me um, i also think in regards to diversity 
I think there's more work to be done around this um, and hence we have just we will be starting a curriculum audit uh, of, of a number of our subjects just reflecting upon how much diversity is in our curriculum uh, whether we can um, celebrate diversity further it's obviously a, a topical conversation at the moment and it's also interesting because at key stage four we are somewhat limited uh, the parameters from which we can choose our curriculum is somewhat narrowed in order to meet the specifications that exam boards create therefore I think key stage three is the real opportunity to ensure that we that we are as diverse as we possibly can that means looking at our history curriculum and thinking very carefully about how we teach certain parts of our history uh, and also of course looking at our English curriculum and thinking about the texts that we study and actually that we're looking at a breadth of authors from a range of different backgrounds and also I think around PSHE and educating students that that actually Actually, diversity is vital to our society and makes our society far richer and, and we are proud to be a part of that I think that's really really important as well um, we are a predominantly white school there, there is no getting away from it we are um, and and we have therefore I think a sense of responsibility to ensure that the importance of diversity and tolerance is absolutely embedded in everything we do Next question. Can you please give some details on your provision for SEND students or can there be a separate meeting to cover this? Uh, I can give you an overview of SEND students. I think it would be a good idea to, to potentially have a, a separate meeting um, with a member of our SEND team. Um, so we have a, a SEND co on site. We then have a, a team of TAs. Uh, we also have a trained SEND co in our senior leadership team. Um, so who lie manages the SEND department. Um, and we have a very, very specific and bespoke offer in SEND. So we obviously identify first our, and work with our EHCP students. Um, they're students that, that have specific targets based upon their need. Uh, and we will obviously meet with them annually, as is statutory. And, but but the, the conversations that we have are far more regular than that. So it's not just an annual meeting and that's it. There is continued reflection throughout. It might be that they, they do get in class support some some have to get in class support um, some students don't necessarily and, and also don't like it so we, we look at a support slightly differently and, and, and have more mentoring sessions and things like that um, but it absolutely it, it, it ranges from from depending on what students need um, I think Definitely it's worth um, contacting our SENCO, who is on our, on our website, uh, and their email address is on our website, uh, just to potentially book a, a sort of, either a phone call um, or a face-to-face -face meeting, because obviously, the point about SEND is that individual needs are different and therefore you might need to share um, your thoughts on those needs and, and then we can specifically answer uh, how we might approach those needs to ensure that, that the student feels like they're making the progress that they should be making. Next, Next question. question. Um, I'm asking an English teacher this question, what is your English department like? Brilliant. So um, when I joined the school eight years ago, I was I was joined as head of English. So um, I came from a, a school in, in Stepney and Tower Hamlets, uh, moved um, to the area and and took on the English department. And uh, the first thing that I wanted to do was completely redo the curriculum um, and start again, uh, which is what I did. Uh, and then slowly but surely I've sort of moved on from English, although I still teach a year seven English class. Um, and that's very important to me it's often often the best thing in my day actually going in and teaching a group of year sevens and i i, I imagine that that will happen again next year so i will be again teaching a, a, a group of year seven so it could be um, your children that i'm teaching in english and uh, fundamentally since then we've gone from strength to strength so um it might have been myself and, and, and another colleague 
by the way, Mr. Langley, who now runs out of sixth form, who, who perhaps laid the foundations for, for, for English, uh, it's now no doubt accelerated and become an even better department. So I will again talk about outcomes first, uh, and I'll talk about 2019 outcomes rather than 2020 for the reasons I've already said. Uh, 2019 outcomes were, were exceptional, so the progress eight figure uh, I believe was around 0.3. Um, that means that, that students achieved significantly better than what they were forecast to achieve uh, based upon their key stage two SATs test and the flight path or the projection over the five years. Uh, over 80% of student, students achieved a grade four or above, sorry, a grade five or above in English literature. Um, I mean, that really is a high standard, bearing in mind grade five is sort of the new B, um, and, and demonstrates just the sort of level of rigor within, within the English department. The reason they have that success, I think, is because they have a, a such a, a targeted curriculum to, to students' needs. And they really consider what each set requires. They think very, very carefully about where strengths and weaknesses lie in students and definitely tailor their assessment to those needs. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, already, we've, we've noticed in year seven, perhaps, uh, a, slight, um, uh, a slight perhaps gap in spelling which is understandable, especially bearing in mind that, that you know, they had six, six months at home. Um, so so we, were, we were thinking about how we might tailor uh, year seven assessment around spelling throughout this year and how we might be able to target that. So that there's just an example of, of the way that the English team work. They're extremely reflective. The teaching and learning is, is, is really engaging. Um, and it, it's a department we're very, very proud of. I hope that's answered your question. Next. Next question is, do you offer design and technology at GCSE? So we do offer design and technology at GCSE. It is a very um, successful subject over the years. Uh, I would just add one caveat that, that design and technology is extremely difficult to recruit in currently. Um, so, so that is, is always a sort of barrier to, to subject success sometimes. Um, but there is no doubt that, that we, we absolutely offer it. Um, and it covers a range of facets now as well. Technology, it doesn't, it's not just metalwork and woodwork. Uh, it, it covers a range of areas from product design um, and of course uh, graphics as well. Uh, and, and electronics so it sort of it combines a number of different areas and, and, and we do offer that and we do have the facilities to be able to offer that. Next question is please could you tell us approximate class sizes? Approximate class sizes um, it depends on the year group obviously and the size of year group so in year 11 approximate class sizes can range from 15 in an option subject to 28 um, sometimes in the higher maths and English sets, we might flood those sets a bit more to 30, 31. Uh, and that's because those students are aspiring for, for seven, eight, nine. So there is a real sense of acceleration in that classroom. Um, in lower down the school, we're obviously busier. Um, and, and class sizes very rarely, well, very rarely go over 30, but there are some that are 32. Uh, we don't particularly like that. Um, but at the same time, uh, sometimes we, it, it helps, especially in an environment where students are um, very gifted and, and the sort of challenge within that classroom can become addictive. Uh, down, down in the lower sets, uh, we obviously have less students and more adults in that room um, to ensure that the individual needs are specifically targeted. Next question. Next question. What opportunities are there for art and design outside of the curriculum? Uh, I think it should say from year seven onwards and are the students allowed to use art and art department facilities outside of normal class time? So if opportunities outside of the curriculum yep. and outside of normal class time in art. Okay, so opportunities in art outside the curriculum. Um, art, along with English, uh, there's a number of departments I'm proud of, and I, and I could give them all a shout out. Um, but there's no doubt over the past few years that art and English outcomes have been really exceptional. Um, and, and art is, is, is a really strong department. And again, it's rooted in a very, very strong um, thoughtful curriculum and that's why uh, so in, in in addition to their year seven to eight key stage three offer and their nine ten and eleven offer and sixth form offer um, we also have art clubs at lunchtime obviously at the moment we're not we're not running them currently because 
we're having to run school slightly differently at the moment. Um, but usually key stage three art club on certain days, we then have a key stage four art club. To be honest, the key stage four art club often is more around targeted improving your portfolio and the work that you're doing for your, for your GCSE um, qualification. Um, but the key stage three art club is hugely popular, so much so that we have to use both our art studios um, and, and continues to be popular. So there is that regular opportunity. Additionally, we have competitions that we run. So we're currently running a competition with Newport Parish Council uh, and Essex Local Authority around what Newport means to them and students are designing a piece of artwork to symbolise that uh, and we're encouraging as many students to get involved as possible. Uh, equally during lockdown I ran a competition for um, to basically ensure that, that we were we, we stressed that we were a tolerant um, diverse culture and I wanted a poster which celebrated that both at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 so that I could place them around school. Um, we have now had them printed, we have two winners at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 and some of that, some of that work is incredible. Uh, the, the, the entrance, it was really difficult to pick two winners. Um, I did, but it was difficult um, to pick two winners to win that competition. So there's an example of a flavour of just some of, uh, some of the work that goes on. Of course, we also have um, drama and art combining sometimes, so it might be the art help out with set design uh, and things like that for school shows. So, so it really is, it's quite fluent and fluid in terms of the extra opportunities. Can you remind me of the second part of the question? Is outside of normal class time and outside of the curriculum too? It's two different bits to that. Fine. Um, which I, think I think I've covered that. Brilliant. I hope I've covered that. Okay, so, so last question, unless anybody's got any others to post. Last question is Will GCSE dance be offered eventually? We would like to offer GCSE dance. It's definitely something we've had conversations about. We do have colleagues in school that could offer that. It really depends on the facilities, actually, and, and the space in the school to be able to offer it properly. So we have one drama studio. It's a great drama studio, but drama is a very popular subject. So nine times out of ten, it's full during the day. Uh, then we think about, the well, what about the sports facilities and the sports hall? Well, they're also being used in PE, especially in winter months. Uh, sport is an incredibly popular um, subject and and co-curricular offer in this school that that it's that it's full that it's busy and that's why we're building a new multi-use games area outside for for that reason um so the short answer is yes we would like to but we are going to need to have to consider the facilities and where we actually um, so that we can provide a, a strong offer of dance uh, because what I wouldn't want to do is offer a subject whereby the facilities were not good enough to produce the outcomes that the students I know could, could deliver. So unless there are any other Fine, so I think, I believe it, I've answered the questions that have been posed on the chat. If there are any other um, questions I'll be I'll be more than willing to answer them um, I realize I have gone over time uh, but I said I'd just carry on until until we dropped um, so if there are any other questions I'll give you just a, just a minute to 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 um, add them into the chat if you haven't um, I will just sort of summarize where we're at and what happens next so as I said it, it's likely we are going to be very popular this year so um, it, it, in regards, you have six choices to put down for your secondary schools and you have, I am not going to give you the hard sell of our school. Um, you have a range of options um, in this area uh, and, and some brilliant schools. And I think it's really, really important to note that and you have to decide what's best for your child or children. Uh, however, what, what I would say is that we are becoming increasingly popular, which is brilliant. And it, it, is, it is more difficult if you put a sort of third, fourth, fifth choice to get a place. Um, and, and that's just unfortunately the nature of, of the beast. Um, and when a popularity of the school grows, it, it suddenly has first and second choice and that's it, it, it becomes full. Um, there is obviously a situation with buses. Uh, I'm sure some of you will be, will be wanting your child or children to get the bus uh, and that's an added expense and I'm, I'm really sorry, there isn't, there isn't really anything I can do about that as a school, uh, apart from continue to, to stress your concerns to, to Essex Local Authority about it. Um, however, uh, what, what I would say is that, that 
sometimes you do need to travel to get to a good school and that's just the reality uh, of the situation of especially being a rural school um, and and we are in a in a, in a village and, and therefore um, 80 85 percent of our children have to travel to school uh, every day now the good thing about that is that they will be traveling with friends and they make friends on that journey to and from school as well I think there was another question yeah, that pinged in. We just had a question come in about uh, the catchment area. So what is your mm. current catchment area? I know it recently got smaller. Yeah, it's, it's getting smaller all the time. So, so um, when I first joined the school, we went out towards sort of, all, all the way out towards Royston. Um, we also went out towards um, Bishop Stalford, obviously the other way. And then of course, towards um, almost towards Cambridge and, and that area as well. Um, and of course, um, all the villages towards sort of Buntingford and, and, and that, that area as well. There's no doubt it shrank. I can't give you a specific, it's from this postcode to this postcode, because it depends on choice and it depends on other schools and their admission policies as well. It really is a complex um, policy and process. Um, what I would say is that it's clear that our net is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and, and, you know, Newport is growing. Um, other villages in the area are growing. Uh, and therefore, uh, we are having to cater to those to those students that, that are near. Um, so what I would suggest to you, again, if you are further away, and you want your child to come to this school, I think first choice is yeah, to give yourself a really good shot of, of ensuring that, that your child gets a place. It is more than likely we will have a waiting list next year, um, uh, especially if we look at the growth in the area. Um, we have 200 places next year. Um, it might be that, that we, could, we could go to 210 uh, and get seven form entry. Uh, I think we probably could do that, but anything more than that, we, we couldn't offer. So there would be a waiting list. So I think that that sort of sums up just just how important it is that if that if the school does interest you, you look at first and second choice. I'm just going to uh, there's there's two more areas, but just a follow up question that links to that. Yep. Are feeder schools automatically given a place? Okay, are feeder schools automatically given a place? Um, not necessarily. It's on the location of where you live. Um, so I, I think that's really important to note. Now we do have a sibling rule and that is still part of our admissions policy. Not all schools have that, but we do. Uh, it, we also obviously give priority to, to students on an EHCP plan, uh, students in care uh, and also service children. Um, and then it's sibling. So we do have that and then it's everybody else. Um, and it really does depend on your, on your postcode. Uh, and how close you are to the school. And we have 45 feeder primary schools, so that's why we can't give preferential treatment. So you've opened up the bus can of worms. So there are two questions about buses. Buses, go um, for it. Where can I get information regarding school buses? Yep. And linked to that, another question, I've been told some of the buses are full, will more be provided for next year? Um, I'm afraid some of those questions I can't answer. So it's worth giving Stevenson's a call. Um, uh, although Stevenson's do not have the, uh, I believe the complete bus contract anymore of Essex schools, they still have a predominant, um, a number of their bus, the, the main buses are Stevenson's to still come and drop off and pick up at our school. Uh, it might be worth trying to contact them. It might be worth contacting Essex schools transport. Uh, who would be able to give you some information about um, where, based upon where you live and what buses go through uh, and also how popular that bus route is. Uh, there are a couple of extremely popular bus routes. One goes to Great Dunmo and all of the way to Great Dunmo. Uh, the other one goes towards Carver Barracks and all the way around that one. It's called the 451 and the 453. Those two buses are busy. Um, now, obviously, we may lose some students in year 11 and year 13, which will, will produce some room. Um, but each year, it seems like more students are travelling in on the bus. 
So um, we won't lose a great deal, I'm afraid. So I would, I would definitely contact um, uh, Stevenson's and also uh, Essex School Transport. You could ring our main reception. They do, they do know an awful lot. They know a lot more than me. And they may be able to give you an answer on, on buses because obviously some of their children travel in on bus as well. Um, so it could be worth just, just giving us a call as well uh, on, a, on, a, on a normal day and, and asking the question. So Brilliant. I think I think we've come to the end of the questions. Um, thank you very much for your time this morning. I hope that I've given you a flavour of what of what the school's about, of what our ethos is about, uh, and I and I really hope that that whatever you choose for your for your for your child, um, that, that um, I know you will. The choice will be positive, uh, and I wish you all the very best um, with the future of, of of your child's education. Um, thank you very much, and uh, I will hopefully see you very soon.